Hey, how's it going? This is Gazelig for GrinderSchool.com. Here today with episode 6 of my How to Master MTT series. Uh, today is going to be looking at middle stage play and adjusting to stack sizes. Um, with the primary focus then on playing um, a short stack and playing uh, the big stack. So, uh, quickly, let's talk about playing the short stack. Um, I've already created a, a mini series on um, on playing the short stack, so I won't go into too much now. Um, but I really recommend checking out my shorts on short stack play. And there were shorts on shoving. Um, so when you had, let's say, fewer than 20 big blinds, um, maybe even f um, fewer than 16 bigs, then you, um, you know, open shoving. Uh, we had calling someone else's shove and working out the... Uh, profitability and how much equity you would need um, to make a call uh, break even and profitable and we talked about re-stealing as well um, and looking for spots um, where that would be uh, be profitable so today um, rather than go through all of that again um, I'm going to show you really quickly how to make your own push fold chart uh, using the ICM calculator at holdenresources.net and then I'm going to jump straight to the um, uh, big stack play where we can talk um, more through the various various uh, things we need to discuss today. So um, let me just bring up really quickly um, the ICM Nash calculator. Now just for this, the benefit of this example, uh, I really recommend you play around with this. You can put in um, uh, real stack sizes, you know, you take a hand history and you can put this in, um, put in the exact stack sizes and the BBs, um, what the BB is, what the SB is, um, the ante. Um, always set the structure to one or 100 um, when you're looking at uh, chip equity. Um, and yeah, so you can put in the stack sizes for each of the players. Um, under the gun goes first, and then the big blind is at the end here. Uh, but what we're going to do today is just um, I'm going to show you really quickly. So every, let's say every other player has at least, uh, well, has two times as many chips as you. They all have 20 bigs, and we have 10 bigs on the button. Okay. Um, that's what I've done there is uh, just made sure everyone has got 8,000 chips, and we've got 4,000. And then if we click calculate. It brings up a list of hands, um, a range of hands, sorry, that we can uh, profitably shove. So it says button here, and it says push 45.7%. Now, if we scroll down to what that actually looks like, um, twos plus, ace x plus, king two suited, etc. Okay, um, but this bears in mind. Now, this is um, Nash equilibri uh, equilibrium. Sorry. So uh, it takes into account that the small blind is calling 29.7%. Um, and the big blind is calling with 40.6%. Now, I think it's unlikely, uh, especially the big blind, to be calling this wide. Um, of course, it depends on how loose or tight these players are. Um, now, in this particular example, the small blind and big blind only had 20 big blinds. Now, if we change it, the big blind, say, had 100 big blinds, um, you could expect his range to be um, something like this for calling, or maybe even wider, for calling a 10 big blind shove because it doesn't really affect his stack. But someone with a 20 big blind uh, stack, the 10, 10 bigs into that 20 big blinds is quite a lot and it would, you know, it's a severe dent, it's 50% of their stack. So um, I would expect um, the, both the small blind and the big blind to be calling much, much tighter than uh, than these, these ranges suggest, which means in turn that our range for shoving on the button can be much, much wider. Um, so the purpose of this exercise is to give you a, a starting point um, for shoving, uh, but then you need to, if you go back to my uh, shorts on on shoving, then you can work out um, you know how wide you can actually uh, actually shove based on what you perceive the your opponents in the small blind and the big blind um, to call you with. Okay, so uh, if there are any questions on that, just just let me know. Um, I can go through um, this. Uh, Nash equilibrium calculator again if you want um, in more detail um, just um, where I've, we've got quite a few hands to, to get through so I'll uh, quickly go back to this so let's move on then really quickly playing the big stack um, talking about awareness of other stacks and effective stack size now when we um, talk about effective stack size it's the stack size um, of the the shortest uh, player in the hand, so whoever has the fewest fewest chips in the, in the hand. So let's say, play, say you're playing against one opponent. Um, you have 80 big blinds and they have 12 big blinds. The effective stack is 12 big blinds because you can only win 12 big blinds. They can only win 12 big blinds. Okay, they can't win your 80 big blinds because they haven't got that many chips um, to put up in the first place. So um, this short is going to be all about um, being aware of the other stacks at the table. Now, whenever you play um, 
generally when you play uh, any hand you should be looking at the stacks around you um, especially behind you to see what um, what sort of plays you can make but in the middle stages it's really really important to uh, consider this as the shacks, uh, stacks get shallower um, we need to be aware of um, what our, the stacks might do behind us and make a decision about uh, what we're going to do um, based on what you think they might do so if you think you're going to raise from the button um, and you say, okay, well, I'm going to call the small blind because he's only got 12 big blinds, and I think his range here is going to be quite wide, but I'm definitely going to fold to the big blind because he's got a 23 big blind stack, um, and also he's very, very tight, so his range is going to be much, much tighter. Uh, so to make that decision uh, before you raise. Um, so I've got an example then, queen jack off suit. Now, this um, reason why I've put queen jack off suit is not, just, not because uh, we're actually going to watch the hand, um, but it's just to give us an idea of what we need to be looking for based on what I just said. So um, always looking, you've got Queen Jack off suit here. Um, we've got an under 20 big blind stack here, just under 22 big blinds, um, 12 big, uh, sorry, um, 14 big blinds here, uh, just under 100 big blinds, so uh, really, really big stack over here. Um, 26 bigs over here, 26, 27 bigs. Um, 21 bigs and then we're on the button with about 58 bigs um, and then 30, 32 bigs and just under 10 bigs. Okay, so to, to just to ingrain that really, really quickly, just be really, really aware of the, the different stack sizes. Now, if I was gonna open from the from the button here, I'd have to be prepared to call the big blind shove because he's uh, he has under 10 bigs and we're generally gonna uh, get about um, two to one on the, on the call. And um, we'll, we'll talk about that um, a bit more later on. Um, but perhaps against the um, 32 big blind stack, I mean, I'm not going to be raised calling if this guy decides to, to shove in. Um, if uh, Let's look around the rest of the table. Um, so I could uh, play against uh, this particular stack, look to play pots in position. Uh, same with uh, this particular stack. Be wary here of this uh, 21 big blind stack. If I decide to three bet him and he decides to four bet, uh, again, we're going to be priced into to call. Although, um, if you think that his four betting range is really, really tight, then we can actually um, get away uh, from that. Um, I know a lot of um, coaches and a lot of players advocate that um, if you're getting two to one, you should always, always make the call. Um, but if you think about the range of hands, uh, we can br quickly bring in uh, poker so for this. Um, let's just let's use the queen jack off suit um, as an example, um, and let's say his range is going to be um, tens plus ace queen suited. Uh, sorry, ace ace queen plus. You can see that we don't get uh, thirty three point three percent equity. We're only getting twenty seven point eight one two. Okay, um, and if you think about it as well, we're going to go from uh, fifty eight big blind stack down to thirty. Seven, you know, if the, then the blinds go up. Suddenly we're uh, down to thirty. Um, it affects us affects us a lot more. So we we should always be thinking about how the uh, stacks affect affect our stack as well. So um, playing against another big stack. So still flat suited connectors and pocket pairs. Um, you can still you know win very very big pots against these players. Um, I wouldn't play uh, suited connectors and pocket pairs against smaller stacks than let's say thirty five to forty big blinds. Um, just because they're, um, you're not going to win enough times to make the uh, the move profitable. Um, and also create a dynamic with your opponents, especially in position. So the more that we can do that with, with bigger stacks, the more we can make our opponents make, make a mistake. And if we're always playing in position, uh, then we have a, a massive advantage over them. So I've put that e either three bet in position, uh, which creates a dynamic um, for your opponent to four bet, um, or to call out of position, um, which puts them under pressure. Or we can flatten position and play post flop and actually actually play some poker rather than it being um, three bet, four bet, five bet, uh, or pre flop game. Okay, so I'm just going to show you a quick example of um, a tens hand. Um, so this particular opponent has a um, pretty big stack, um, uh, less than less than hours though. Um, now at this this point, um, I don't want to three bet and um and get it in with pocket tens um i feel that that's just too many chips to commit at this stage and i feel that this player's uh four betting range is gonna be you know we're gonna be flipping at best 
um, against ace king, possibly ace queen. Uh, but we're going to be up against jacks, queens, kings, and aces a lot of the time as well. So essentially, if we three bet here, we're turning our hand into a bluff. So I decided to call in position uh, to keep all of the hands that I um, dominate in there. And also to allow him to continue bluffing if he completely misses the flop. So um, this kind of flop, um, I think I'd expect my opponent to, to continuation bet a lot of the time. Uh, he decides to go ahead and bet just over half pot. And at this stage, I think there's a lot of hands in his range that completely miss this. Um, the problem is if I raise in this particular spot, he's going to continue with the hands that... Um, Sorry, he's going to fold all of the hands that um, you know completely missed this, and I want him to to continue to to barrel on the turn, um, you know, to keep all of his uh, his air in in the hand. Um, also, if I raise here, he's likely to come along with, let's say, King X hand or possibly Queens and Jacks. Um, I guess possibly a nine, and then some flush draws as well. Um, but I think the best the best bet in this in this spot is to flat and see what he does on the turn. You'll find a lot of players will see bet the flop and then give up on the turn. I might be able to take it away on the turn. Uh, in this particular spot, the um, opponent decides to then bet just under half pot. Um, I don't feel that this card has changed much. If we were behind on the flop, then we're still behind. The only hand um, really that we were ahead of that now goes ahead of us is... Um, as it is a nine, um, but there are two nines out there. The likelihood of him having it is it's quite low. We can't rule it out, but um, you know it's 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 not that likely. And I think that uh, at this point as well, if he's trying to range us as as well, if he did have a nine, he'd probably bet a little bit more for value. If he really believed that we had a king um, or a flush draw, or let's say something like ten jack, queen jack for a a gut shot, uh, unlikely, but you know it could happen, um, especially with the um, the, the stack sizes being quite. Uh, quite deep um, I think he would bet a little bit more so this makes me feel that he's um, he has a weaker hand he's trying to bet me off um, uh, the kind of pocket pair that I, that I have um, I don't think this sort of bet's going to uh, make me fold a flush draw um, so I, I decide to, to, to make the call in this particular spot uh, completely um, blank river um, and he decides to check. Now I've got to think, well, you know, if I bet in this particular spot, am I going to get um, worse hands to, to call or better hands to fold? Um, if he did decide to double barrel with uh, queens and jacks, um, I think it's, um, I think he could possibly call here, in which case um, we don't get the better hands to, to fold. Um, and I, th I think it's unlikely at this particular point um, that, say, pocket eights, uh, pocket sixes for example will we'll call in this spot um i guess if he thinks that we're we're on a flush draw or some sort of straight draw then he could be checking to um to pick off a a river bluff um but so i think in this spot i just decided to um to check behind and he showed a a queen of hearts so he um he had the uh, the nut flush draw on the on the flop in the turn and then just decided to give it up on the river i don't know if he would have called a small small bet thinking that I was on the flush draw as well um, and he would have called it with ace high but um, you know we win a pretty big pot here 40 40,000 um, which is at this stage um, really really nice so it's sort of talking about not just uh, folding um, second pair on the flop uh, against two barrels just uh, thinking about your opponent's range and the range of hands that um, he would uh, he would bet and also thinking about pot size sorry bet size as well on each street okay um, so that's that one. Uh, let's move on to the next one really quickly. The playing the big stack versus a medium sized stack. So let's say 25 to 35 big blinds. Um, I suggest three betting light versus good players and putting them into a four bet or fold um, position or mode. Uh, I put at the bottom here, be wary of three betting light versus weak players though who will call down post flop light. And um, what you'll find is a lot of players, a lot of weak players or weaker players will flat um, three bets out of position and then not fold any piece of the flop. So it's um, it's important, especially at this stack size, and to be wary of that. Um, otherwise, you're just going to be spewing away chips. Um, once again, create a dynamic. Uh, if we can always force the the better players to fold um, out of position with this stack size, um, and we continue to to pound on them, um, you know, to to 
really try and um i guess wind them up so when they do actually think that you know we're just messing with them again and we pick up a big hand um we can um, we can win win a lot of chips uh, and also put their play pots in position so as an example here ace nine suited so this particular player decides to to open um 2.4x so it makes me think he's a little bit weaker i think most players nowadays 2x 2.2x so I decide to three bet, I guess fairly large, 2.5x myself. Um, but I guess, um, you know, if he decides to, to shove in this spot, um, you know, if I'd made my, my three bet a little bit smaller, um, then I'm, I'm risking less because I'm not going to call a four bet from this player. Um, I think his four bet range is going to be uh, quite quite tight, um, which obviously crushes ace nine suited. Um, so I bet a uh, half pot and he decides to, to shovel in. Uh, here we're getting 28.9%, getting getting pretty pretty good odds, um, and he could be doing this with a bunch of hands, um, including you know a not, any nine, five, four, six, seven, uh, seven, eight, diamond draw, okay, uh, and some random random overcards as well, um, and I guess some pocket pairs. So with top pair in this particular spot, I'm happy to happy to call it off, and he does show pocket eights. Let's move on to the next bit, playing the big stack versus a resteal stack. So when we're playing against 16 to 22 big blind stack, um, we need to watch closely for those players capable of restealing light. Um, an important thing to think about is looking at the effect their stack would have on your stack. And that means sometimes you'd be able to um, take marginal spots if it doesn't really affect your, your stack size too much. So if you've got you know a really big stack and you're calling a 16 big blind stack, you might put, choose to take more marginal spots. If you have um, a 30 big blind stack and the 16 big blind stack decides to re-steal against you, you could think, well, you know, if I if I win this, I go up to 46 bigs. If I lose it, I go down to 14 bigs. Perhaps that's not the best opportunity um, to open up um, your calling range and take a marginal spot. But that really comes down to to how you how you how you feel as well. Um, you know, if you're perfectly comfortable playing a 14 big blind stack, then then you could uh, possibly take that um, marginal spot. If you feel that the you know the tournament you're playing in is um, full of really really good players, then that would be a perfect opportunity to to take that marginal spot. But if you feel there are going to be much more better opportunities for you to pick up chips, then you might choose to to uh, um, avoid that marginal spot. So um, yeah, look at the effect, uh, effect their stack would have on your stack, and then steal liberally versus weak type players. So if players with this um, stack size, don't understand about resteeling light, and you can pr open up pretty much any two two cards. You know, if they're folding uh, eighty ninety percent of the time, then you uh, profitably can can open up any two cards, uh, and then just fold when they do shove. So okay, so particular spot. Um, so the both the blinds have um, resteal stacks. Now, if we think they're really weak type. Um, then I feel that uh, Ace Jack offsuit is going to be probably a marginal uh, call if they decide to shove. Um, Ace Queen, I think I'd be calling all the time, um, and probably pocket eights, nines plus. Uh, but as we can see, the uh, big blind decides to shove here, and we get, we need forty two point three percent to make this make a break even call here. So if we look at um, Ace Jack offsuit again. Um, range of hands, and if we think that he's a weak type player, only three betting really for for value, um, we might say that this was his particular range, five percent of hands. And if we evaluate that, we're getting twenty eight point five four six percent. Okay, um, that's not even a marginal spot. That's just a definite fold. Now, if we had Ace Queen off suit, um, you know, suddenly goes up to thirty six percent. Okay, but we're still not at the forty two point three percent that we need. Now, if we go take this back to Ace Jack off suit and decide, okay, well, I think he's going to shove any pair down to fives. Um, I think he's going to shove, um, let's say, ace-9 suited, ace-5 suited, uh, quite a lot of aces here, definitely king-queen, uh, and some of these Broadway suited hands as well. Okay, uh, and we evaluate that, suddenly we've got 46%, and this would be um, a spot to, to call. Okay, because we need 42.3%, and here we're getting 46.634%. Let's again. Yeah, we're going to go to uh, playing the big stack versus the short stack. This is the last bit. So playing against a, a stack size of uh, less than 15 bigs, still still liberally versus weak type players. You'll find that they, especially near bubble, uh, that we come on to later on in this series, um, that players, you know, they'll still be really really tight with seven, six, five big blinds. Um, 
as you get um, as they get shorter though you need to be prepared to, to call off lighter when you're getting the correct odds um, and also you should maybe tighten up versus active opponents especially if you've got a weak range and you've been opening uh, fairly liberally so let's look at this 7-6 offsuit hand okay um, so in this particular spot okay both players have less than 10 bigs we decide to, to open the small blind shoves and this is what we're talking about uh, right at the start of this short is that we need to decide what we are going to do uh, when we decide to open. Were we just going to immediately fold to both players? Were we going to call if we were getting the, uh, the right odds? You know, if we're getting two to one. Um, with our hand here, uh, it's going to be very difficult to get 33% get, unless this guy's shoving something like 50 or 60% of hands, uh, which means uh, we're much better off opening in this spot, opening and calling, so raise calling against the shorter stack. Um, with ace x hands, uh, pocket pairs, king x hands, and I can show you that in a minute. So in this particular spot, we need 36.4%. I'll just show you 7-6 off suit, and really quickly, if I just say 60% of hands, okay, then we are just getting the right um, odds to call. Um, you know, if he's shoving any tighter than that, let's say 25%, uh, we are not getting the right uh, odds to call, okay. Um, we think in this particular spot, um, let's take out some of these weaker kings. Uh, let's say this opponent, that's what he decides to, to go with. Okay. Uh, we can click apply and we'll see. Okay, so we're getting 34.82% and we need 36.4. So, what sort of hands can we call with? Um, you know, really good pocket pairs are obviously going to be. Um, absolutely smashing this. Um, let's try pocket fives. Okay, pocket fives would be um, a call. Pocket threes. Okay, yeah. Uh, pocket twos. Okay, yeah. So as I said, any pocket pair. Um, Ace X hands. Let's try Ace two off suit. Okay, yeah, it's going to be a call. Um, let's try King two off suit. All right, that's definitely going to be a fold. So we want decent kings. Let's try King five suited. Okay, that's going to be a call. So king four suited. All right, still going to be a call. So you can see, so suited kings. Let's try to see if we can find the worst king that we can call with. Uh, let's try king eight off suit. All right, so that that's probably going to be the worst one, king eight off suit uh, for calling there. So it's much better if you, play, you know that the player is shoving with a lot of hands here. Um, that uh, aren't ace high hands. And calling with an ace high hand, and this what is going to be um, break even or profitable. So just to recap, um, you should definitely be working on your short stack game away from the table using Sit and Go Wizard or the ICM Nash calculator at HoldenResources.net, um, and also my calculators and my shorts. You should be looking through them and and working on your game um, in terms of shoving, calling, restealing, things like that. And in terms of big stack play, I recommend playing, trying to play in position all the time. You have that advantage of acting last post flop. Um, you should be looking to adjust your play versus the different stack sizes. So we just need to be wary of what our opponents might do with different stack sizes. And we need to uh, find out the players that know about stack sizes and understand uh, when they should be looking to re-steal, when they should be uh, three betting to put pressure on, when they can be playing pots in position. Um, and also, uh, you should look to prefer to take marginal spots versus short stacks rather than than other big stacks. So anyway, this has been Gazelig for grinderschool.com. Um, until next time, have a great time at the tables. Cheers, guys. See you later. Bye.